crafts, join the poodle pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink poodle crafts is the way. What a good boy. Hey, crafty family. It's me. And today we are going to make some texture paste for part two. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make it first before I start making it. Um, I had remembered a while ago, somebody that had asked me a question about this. So I'm going to explain it the way I'm measuring this because I only want to make a small amount, um, because I already have texture paste and I don't want to make too much. I'm going to measure this in parts and some people don't know what that means. And it means basically that whatever you're using to measure with is your part so this is going to be my part since it doesn't have an exact measurement you know i don't know whether this is you know like a, a quarter cup which i doubt it it's obviously smaller than that and since it doesn't have an actual measurement you just call it a part and if if it's something that you're measuring that you kind of know how to measure you can kind of do it that way where whatever you use becomes your measuring cup so this is basically called you know this will be my part and so I will base it on everything off of that so if one part you know and you could use anything this could be my part you know what I mean depending on what you're making and if it's if it's like something that you're good at measuring and you know how to measure it perfectly I don't know why this has a label on it anyway you know so anything can be your part depending on what you're measuring and what you know you know how how you know if you know really well how to measure it so like you know if there's a recipe or there's something that you make that you know how to do it just based on consistency or whatever however you know how to do it real well you can do it based on part and so this is my part so when I say one part you don't have to have this container it can be any container as long as you stick to that one container and that e will give you the equal parts that you need so it doesn't really matter what kind of container you use so when I say one part it's one part that could be this that could be one of these one of these whatever you have any kind of small container you have can be your part so we're going to use for the sake of keeping it at a small um, a small amount mixed up so I'm going to um, use half of this and just say a half part um, because I don't want to use too much and I don't want to make too much so a half, a half part of glue I'm going to mix that in to a cup And then, since that was half the cup, now I'm going to use quarter of the cup of water. So just a little bit of water. So quarter of a part. And now, because I want to still, um, well, I'm not going to use that. Okay, so for the next part, we're going to use baby powder. Now you can use, um, this is cornstarch baby powder. Um, you can use regular, any kind of baby powder you want. I just get the cheap stuff. It works fine. 
Um, you can also use your marble dust if you have marble dust. This is the time that you would use marble dust the same way. I'm using this. Normally I would use marble dust, but this works actually great. This, I've done this method. It works actually fantastic. It's nice and smooth. Um, and most people have this, so that's why I wanted to use it. Now, I'm only making a small amount for two reasons. A, I don't need a lot because I've got plenty of marble dust, or I mean texture paste. And two, I don't have a lot of baby powder left, so I'm trying to make just a small amount because I don't know if, you know, I don't want to not have enough. So what you're going to do is add in the baby powder slowly. And this is where you're kind of going to eyeball the recipe a little bit because you're going to just slowly add it in until it looks like texture paste, basically. Um, this is why there's no real recipe for this part. You just add it in until it gets pasty. I mean, that's really pretty much it. A little glue, a little water, and a little baby powder. And you just mix it up real well before you add any more because it's easier to add more than it is to take out. But then again, if you do add too much, add a little more glue and a little more water and just play with the recipe. It doesn't have to be exact. It really doesn't. It'll work just fine. See, this is still very like pancake batter and it needs to be more of a paste. So I'm obviously gonna add more. You're gonna end up using more than you think, but definitely you wanna put it in slowly. Make sure you scrape the sides and the bottom and mix it real well. And again, it's still not enough. And use a little more. <laughs> After a while, it starts to, the baby powder starts to poof out a little bit as you're going. I'm going to grab a palette knife and check out my consistency here because it might be a little easier to mix it with a palette knife when it starts to get real thick. And you don't want to make it so thick that you can't spread it. As soon as it's just able to hold its shape, then you're good. Don't don't feel like you know. Don't feel uh, like it's able to hold its shape on on the palette knife. This should be pretty good. Um, we can give it a try because it's not going to feel like regular um, like regular store bought um, texture paste. It's going to be a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more runny than that, but as long as it does its job of, for example, here's a stencil, as long as it does its job of holding its shape, which we'll test it out and see.
and it does, then we're good, you know? I don't need to add any more to that. That's actually perfect. And once, you know, you could test it out along the way, see how you like it, you know, and it's, it's, it'll hold its texture just like, you know, gives you some good texture, then you're good to go. So that's all you need for your texture paste. Let me just clean off this real quick because you obviously want to clean off any stencils you use as soon as you're done because it'll get stuck inside of it. So now that we've got a good paste, you're good to go. Now you're going to want to put it into an airtight container of some sort. So you would want to take it and transport it into something that has a lid which you know something that has a lid that you can seal it with now at this point also if you wanted to take some and section it off like I have some in here and then I have some here and you can add things to it like for example I have the this like coarse sand it's a vase filler stuff that I got from uh, Target a long time ago. You could take some of this, even though this isn't sand, you could take sand or this. This is kind of a little bit coarser, you know what I mean? Like the granules are bigger. And you can add this in to this and mix it into the paste. and make your own type of texture paste with it which is pretty cool so for this so if you want something with a lot of texture you can add something like this or sand or many other things um, you can add to it. They also sell, um, Art Alchemy sells, um, let me see if I have it right next to me here. I'm not sure I do. So Prima makes these art mini art stones and they have the larger art stones. And these are great also for mixing with your paste. Um, to give a really cool effects here's a tag and what I'll do is take some um, take some of the paste and mix some of the these art stones which are very light and airy and kind of uh, kind of like a sand and mix those in and show you what that looks like to get different texture because you know as a mixed media artist it is all about texture and you know it's fun to play with regular texture paste but sometimes it's a lot of fun to get that extra texture with using different things because it's you know something where it makes somebody say oh like how did they do that you know like you feel it and it just has that cool feeling now yes it is harder to spread when it's got the texture stones in it but once you get it spread i mean you're not going to want to use this through a stencil it's basically just to add like some cool you know random texture in places that's what you would use this for and i probably mixed way too many of the stones in but it's fine as long as you can get it spread but you can add like like I said I added too much in but you can get some really cool very thick texture and of course if it's gonna be thick texture it's gonna take longer to dry but you can get some cool looks that way
You can also add in, add some more in, and add, try the larger, which I won't put as many in because that's hard to spread when there's a lot in there. Um, the art stones, which are a little bit bigger. And me and Secret were talking about these. Um, you know those, they remind me of those things that you... Uh, would find in potting soil like those little you know those little white balls you find in potting soil in the uh, in the um, garden section like when you're getting potting soil that's what those little white things remind me of and I bet you you could use them <laughs> in your texture pastes I don't see why not and it would give, simulate the same thing but again it's you can add these little stones to give like a pebbled walkway look like you know what I mean like if you're making something and you know what I mean it would look really cool when it dries it would give like a really cool kind of texture so what I'm going to do is leave these to dry and I'm even going to throw this one on here because I've got some left we're just going to throw it on here we're going to leave them to dry and we're going to come back and see what they look like after they're completely dry which because it's so thick and you know laying it on so thick it might take a little while so you might have to leave it a lot longer than you would you know make maybe 24 hours 12 hours something like that longer than you would normal like this for the stencil this, this stencil here is almost dry already because it will dry pretty fast but you're going to want to leave, you know, if it's thick like this, you're going to want to leave it for several hours. So I hope you enjoyed that, learning how to make some texture paste and adding some fun things in your texture paste. You can get store-bought stuff. You can use stuff you have around, you know, the house. You might have some sand. Um, you might have some little pebbles from other things that you do. I don't know. Um, but you can find random things uh that you can add and, and if you don't have sand you can go and find like the little tiny glass beads like micro beads or the little glass beads that you use like as vase filler you can these this is a vase filler you can find all different things um you can even add some like bulky spices like those mustard seed spices you can make some paste with that and use that so there's no reason why you can't um, so try a bunch of different things, add it with your paste and, and put it on like cards and see how it dries and see how it works. And you might have some cool things. And like I said, you can also color it. So don't forget, like in part one, I showed you how you can color your texture paste using a variety of things. Um, so definitely try that too and make lots of different texture because that makes it a lot of fun to play around with different textures. Uh, depending on what kind of mixed media art you're doing, you can do that. So here is the pieces with their texture all dry. Very nice and textury. And I do advise that like when you put on massive texture like this or like this, you tape down your item and let it dry taped down because otherwise it, it you know it'll obviously curl up a little bit and then it could when you try to straighten it out it could crack that's why that's cracked so do it on a taped down surface so that your item doesn't stay permanently kind of crooked because when you're putting on that much texture you want it to go on but you don't want it to like warp your thing that you're putting it on so that's just a tip but it's really cool texture it's definitely awesome and i love feeling these different textures and they're fun to use in you know small areas or doing it on large canvases so it's just something to think about um different ways to make texture so i hope you'll give it a try because it's a lot of fun so thanks for watching and i hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel i would really appreciate it and share this video on your social media that would be awesome uh, i also have a patreon set up so if you're interested in supporting my channel and getting some some uh, monthly classes 
that I put together that I'm going to put together live classes just for my Patreons. Follow the link below to my Patreon and check that out. And I hope you guys will have a great rest of your day. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people. Talk to you later. Bye.